Good morning all. A plain white box. Let's open it. Instruction manual for correct application of floating display. Power supply. It's a European two pin. Uh, some circular object in there. And a silver box. So this is a fairly solid looking uh, metal box. Some screws on the bottom so we can take it apart. There's a hole there for the uh, power supply, but that's it. Um, it's got a sort of mag uh, mirror finish. Hello. Right, we're going to need some mains. Uh, we're going to have to adapt that down to European uh, two pin. And now I can plug this in. I don't know how you Europeans put up with these feeble little plugs. They're just a bit noddy, aren't they? Plug that in and it's all wobbly. That's not very good electrics, is it? I mean, to misquote Crocodile Dundee, that's not a plug. This is a plug. Right, let's plug this in. And uh, we get four LEDs. They're nice. I think they're shining inwards to kind of illuminate the thing, what we're going to put on here. Okay, let's just put this wobbly plug over there out of the way for the moment. And uh, now we take this disc out of this bag. That's the top. And we place it on here. And there it is. It floats. So yes, this is a magnetic levitation device. Here's the magnet and it just sits floating on top of, well, what I think must be four electromagnets because you've got four LEDs here. And as you move this magnet, yes, it doesn't take much to make it jump out of its um, magnetic field. That's quite a powerful neodymium magnet. And then you've got to place it back in the field and you've got to get it quite accurate otherwise it just hops off the top. Now fortunately this magnet is supplied with um, a rubber sort of coating because I think if that magnet hit, I don't know whether this is neodymium actually, it's a powerful magnet but if that hit this metal box then it might well shatter. So yes that comes in a little rubber um, surround but I found actually that it helps to put this piece of foam that came with the unit on top of here because then if you make mistakes and drop it on there you're much less likely to uh, have problems and you can and you can practice with this four lights thing and you're trying to get these four lights I'll do a top view in a minute to all come on so you can find the position where this sits in that magnetic field and is controlled presumably by feedback control loops. So let's do this from above so that you can see how the lights help guide you into the position where this is being controlled. There it is, floating and spinning. And you can see that if I move it really just tiny amounts, a millimeter or so, how the uh, LED brightness gives you an indication of where the center point is. And yeah, that sits in there. It seems to take quite a lot of weight. I can push down quite hard on that. So I'll test the weight carrying capability in a moment. This of course spins freely because this magnet has presumably north, uh, well, north might be on top, south on the bottom or vice versa. Um, let's have a look at the feedback control in action. So with the magnet floating, if I press down on it, I can set up quite an oscillation there and it's really under damped. So these um, feedback control loops, I assume that's what there are, four feedback control loops, are really under damped. They're very, very high gain, very sensitive, uh, because they're presumably they've got to work really quite quickly to keep this thing sitting on that magnetic field. You don't have to push it far out until it just jumps out of its magnetic uh, sort of center position. Try and find that. You can just about 
feel it, it kind of resists and then you feel this central position where it seems to just sort of lock in, but it's not very big at all. And you can get it to make um, some quite funny noises. So that's squeaking. It's one of the control loops kind of responding in some way. I don't quite know what it's doing. But these things click on and off if you... And you can feel a distinct... You might be able to just see it where it suddenly pulls in and then releases. It's really quite odd. So you're trying to find that midpoint where all four of them are kind of communicating with the magnet in the same way to get the uh, magnetic lev levitation floating point. So how high does it float? Well, this piece of variable is about six tenths of an inch. So it's probably around that, just over half an inch. Of course, the reflection in the um, mirror finished metal case makes it look double that, of course. Now, will it take my little bucket of um, off cut clippings? Oh, yes, of course, that's <laughs> That's one of the problems. If you put something magnetic onto this, then it all goes haywire. Um, but it's carrying that torch there, which is throwing a really interesting beam of light around the room. Yeah, that's good fun. Right, I put this piece of foam back because I want to uh, let's just get that centered. It does pull very hard. It's got powerful magnets. Oh, it is centered. I now want to put something really quite heavy on that. Right, let's try this uh, 500 gram, so half a kilo uh, reel of tinned copper wire. Now, I'm not getting much interaction magnetically, presumably because this is largely copper. Uh, but that's pushed that right down onto the foam. So can it support that without the foam? Yeah, just about. It's kind of tipping over rather alarming because I think the... Uh, center of gravity is rather high. Uh, yeah, so that is supporting half a kilo. I don't think it could take much more than that. Uh, I could take a little bit more because I can press down on that and it's still supporting it. It does have a bit of a lean on it though. And I've tried centering this up on the magnet and that seems to make it worse rather than better. So I'm just wondering if perhaps this magnet, which is where it seems to be leaning, is a little less powerful than the other three and so yeah it is a little bit tipped over but yeah it's handling half a kilo reasonably well let's uh, put a bit of bounce in there a bit more yeah it's quite bouncy and you can see the uh, LEDs responding to the changing magnetic field now the manual doesn't say a lot really uh, it says connected up it's got a little bit on how to um, find the alignment point, the center point, which you can pretty much work out for yourself. But it does say in here, um, there's an automatic temperature switch. The device may cut off its circuitry if you fail to float the magnet after many attempts. And I presume that's because without the magnet there, these coils get hot. I don't know why they would, but that's what it's implying. Let's try and find that center point again. There it is. And uh, here's another indication that there's some sort of feedback going on here. If I press it down, I can induce, until it leaps off the magnetic field, I can induce some uh, strange buzzing and humming. And I was wondering whether it could um, levitate other types of magnets. I've got some little um, neodymium magnets here, but they it just doesn't, there's no um, response from these LEDs. So I can feel a pull and I can center it, but it just won't trigger the uh, feedback control loop. So it's just just pulls to whichever uh, corner I put it nearest to and it, it just won't sit in the middle there at all. And I thought I'd try this um, Malta Gozo fridge magnet. But there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing there it's just not powerful enough right um i think it's time to take a look inside here so screwdriver at the ready i suppose i should unplug it 
Um, let's start undoing these screws. Yeah, quite tightly done up these and uh, about half the height of the unit, I suppose, the screw length. Oh, well, this is interesting. Um, this is actually plastic. It's one of these very convincing uh, silvered plastics. They're really quite good. Now there's a huge um, circular magnet in here. It's quite warm actually. And four coils. There's a bit of mag uh, metal detritus on there. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, that actually comes out. Oh, oh wow. There are a lot of MOSFETs on the back. Several chips. Um, some things here which are obviously used for alignment. So I wonder if I could um, align it so that the, uh, the magnet sits a little bit flatter on top. Mmm, how interesting. Right, I've powered it up. Um, let's see if I... Oh, I've got to be careful here because if that whacks these coils... Um, I don't want it to do that. Can I, oh, it's just going to cause problems. But can I float this? Yes, there we are. That's floating there. Uh, yes, I can put my pen underneath it. So, yeah, that's fine. There's a couple of pots here. Dare I twiddle those? <laughs> if I do, I'll probably never get it working again. And uh, with the case off, you can probably see better how, as I disturb this, it turns these LEDs on and off. Oh, that's not going to... It's not going to survive many of those, is it? Right, transistors. Um, we've got some D882s. Oh, and B772s. B772, D882. So it looks like they're in complementary pairs. Uh, some sort of push-pull arrangement. Uh, LM324, LM324. So a couple of quad op amps. Um, a 4066. Now, is that some sort of analog switch? Can't quite remember. Um, LM358 op amp there, and something called a 4419, which I don't recognise the number. Now there's a little pair of crossed PCBs in the centre here, and one device sitting on the top. So is that a Hall Effect device? There are also a couple of devices down there, sort of kind of facing each other. Can't see that very well, but they're there. But they're not on the other corners of the board, so... Yeah, two devices lower down and this one device at the top, which is really quite strange. I don't know whether it's using Hall effect to center the magnet on the magnetic field. I would have thought it's using some sort of feedback from the current in the windings. But maybe that Hall effect is used to initially, de oh, that's quite powerful, Paul, to initially detect this magnet going on top and to switch on the feedback control loops, maybe something like that. Well, I can't resist twiddling these pots. Uh, <laughs> I've no idea what they do. They don't say. Let's try this first one first. Is it doing anything? I'm trying to remember the number of turns. I don't think it's doing much. They're not... Um, they haven't got red um, Loctite on them, so they haven't been locked in any particular position. Let's try this one. No, they don't seem to do a lot. I can't remember what they were now. Oh, well, it's working. So and I don't know what those do. Right, I thought I'd go handheld on the camera because it's hard to see with a static shot just what this looks like. But if I sort of rove around, you can see that that's unquestionably uh, floating. Let's rotate it. Yeah, it's a really interesting device. I'm not sure what you'd actually do with it. I suppose display your latest gadget spinning round and round on the top of a magnetic field. And let's just do this um, oscillation thing again. If I press down. Oh. I was doing it just now. Yeah, there we are. You can get it to vibrate. It. Well, it sounds a bit like 50 hertz, but this is DC, of course.
Oh! Yeah, so this is a really interesting and... Oh, gosh. It's pretty vicious when it grabs it. Interesting and curious device. I don't know much about the science of magnetics, but I mean... Fun to play with. Yeah, if you can get that bang on. It levitates. It's quite fun. It does get quite warm though. It's all pretty warm on the back and actually very warm on those transistors. I'm pretty sure these are um, bipolars because I seem to remember the D882 from the uh, supercapacitor protection board. Yeah, I think these are bipolar pairs. Um, so they are going to get quite warm. MOSFETs. I don't know why they didn't use MOSFETs, but yeah, very interesting device. Yeah, so what uh, what an amusing device. Um, this one very kindly supplied by Banggood.com. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below the video uh, if you want to take a look at this on Banggood's website. So yeah, an interesting and curious device. I wonder how much weight of water it can take. Yeah, not bad. Magnetic levitation, folks. Cheerio.